Whenever y'all are ready. Ah, uh, there be some sports are painful and their labor delights in them. Uh, some kinds of ba baseness are nobly undergone and most poor matters point to rich ends. This my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious. But the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her mother's crabbed. And he and she's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such baseness had never like execute her. I forget, but these sweet but these sweet thoughts do refresh my labors. Most busiest when I do it. Alas, now, pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you were enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns, twill weep for having wearied you. My mother is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. She's safe for these three hours. Oh, my dear miss, oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that, and I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious, no, precious creature. I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should, un than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazily by. I would, it would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to do it, and yours is against it. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look warily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me. When you are by at night, I do beseech you, you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my mother, I have broke your head to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard. And many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never had any with so full soul, but some defect in her, did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed. But put it to the foil, and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remembers, save from my glass, mine own. Nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, my good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad, I am skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to like of. But I prattle something too wildly, and my mother's precepts therein I do forget. I am, in, I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so, and would no more endure the wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh, by, flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? O oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound, and crown what I profess with kind event. If I speak true, if hollowly invert what best is boded to me mischief, I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. Fair <laughs> encounter. Of two most rare affections. Rare encounter of two most rare oh, affections. Heavens reign grace on that which breeds between them. Wherefore weep you? At mine own unworthiness, that dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. Hence bashful cunning and Prompt me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll 
die your maid to be your fellow you may deny me but i'll be your servant whether you will or no my mistress dearest and i thus humble ever my husband then i with a heart as willing as bondage heir of freedom here's my hand and mine with my heart in it and now farewell till half an hour hence a thousand thousand so glad of this as they i cannot be you are surprised with all but my rejoicing at nothing can be more out to my book for yet ere supper time must i perform much business appertaining tell not me when the bud is out we will drink water not a drop before Therefore, bear up and boredom, servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster? That's the folly of this island. They say there's but five upon the isle. We are three of them. If the other two be brained like us, the state totters. Oh, drink, servant monster, when I bid thee. Thy eyes are almost set in thy head. Where should they be set else? He were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. <laughs> my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam ere I could recover the shore, five and thirty leagues off and on by this light. Thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster, or my standard. <laughs> Your lieutenant, if ye list, he's no standard. Will not run, monsieur monster. Nor go neither, but you'll lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life if thou beest a good mooncalf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe. I'll serve. I'll not serve him. He is not valiant. <laughs> Most ignorant monster. I am in case to justle a constable. <laughs> thou debauched fish, thou. Was there ever a man, a coward, that hath drunk so much sack as I today? Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half fish and half a monster? No, oh, how he mocks me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Lord, quoth he that a monster should be such a natural. No, no, again, bite him to death, I prithee. Trinculo, keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutin mutineer, I'll the next tree. The poor monster's my subject and he'll not suffer indignity. <laughs> I thank my noble lord. Would thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Oh, Mary, will I kneel and repeat it? I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou! I would my valiant master would destroy thee, I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble him any more in his tail, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. I said nothing. Mum, then, no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing darest not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yes. Yeah. Yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pied's ninny this, thou scurvy patch. I do beseech thy greatness. 
give him blows and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink naught but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stockfish of thee. Why, what did I? I did nothing. I'll go for a raw. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. <laughs> you like this? Give, and, uh, as you like this, give me the lie another time. <laughs> God, give me the lie. Out of your wits and hearing too, a pox on your bottle. This can sack and drinking too. Do. A murrain on your monster and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> now, forward with your tail. Prithee, stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand further. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with a log batter his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasoned out with thy knife. <laughs> Remember, first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, so he calls them, which when he has a house he'll deck with all, and that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a nom -perel. I never saw a woman, but only sicker acts my dam, and she, but she as far surpath as sicker acts as greats does least. Is it so brave, alas? Aye, Lord, she will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave brood. Monster? I will kill this woman. Her daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Excellent. Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee, but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Aye. On mine honor. This would I tell my master. Thou makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Will you troll the catch you taught me but well? At thy request, monster, I will do reason. Any reason. Come on, Trinculo, let us sing. Flautum and cowtum and scoutum and flout and thought is free. That's not the tune. What is the same? This is the tune of our catch played by the picture of nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take it as thou list. Oh, forgive me of my sins. He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou afeard? <laughs> no, monster, not I. Be not afeard. This isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about my ears and sometimes voices that if i then had waked after long sleep will make me sleep again and then in dreaming the clouds methought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that when i waked oh, i cried to dream again 
This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it and after do our work. Lead, monster. We'll follow. I would I could see this taborer. He lays it on me. Will it come? I'll follow, Stefano. <sighs> Our lake and I can go no further, sir. My old bone aches. He's amazed, trod indeed. Through fortnights and meanders, by your patience, I needs must rest me. Oh, Lord. I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the filling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. <coughs> he is drowned, whom we thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that he is out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolve to effect. The next advantage we will take thoroughly. Let it be tonight. For now they are oppressed with travel. They will not, nor cannot, use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. What harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Marvelous sweet music. Give us kind keepers, heavens. What are these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns, that in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix's throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both. And what else, and, and what does else want credit? Come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Travelers ne'er did lie, though fools at home condemn them. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, for certs these are people of the island, Although they are of monstrous shape, yet note, their manners are more gentle kind than of our human generation you shall find. Many, nay, almost any. Miss Lord, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. I cannot too much muse such shapes, such gesture and such sound expressing Although they want the use of tongue, a, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Praise in departing. Sorry. They vanish strangely. No matter, since they have left their viands behind, for we have stomachs. Will it, will it please you to taste of what is here? Not I. Ah, oh, face, sir. You need not fear, when we were boys, who would believe that there were mountaineers, dewlapped like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh, or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breast, which now we find. Each put her out of five for one we will bring us good warrant of. I will stand to and feed, although my last, no matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to and do as we. You are three men of sin whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in it. The never surfeited sea hath cost to belt shop you and on this island where man doth not inhabit you monks men be most unfit to live. I have made you mad. And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools, 
I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds or with bemocked at stabs kill the still closing waters as diminished one dow that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you can hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Thee of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wrath to guard you from, which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow and clear life ensuing. Bravely the figure of this harpy has thou performed my aerial. A grace it had, devouring of my instruction, hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. So with good life and observation strange, my meaner ministers, as several kinds have done. My high charms work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They know are in my power, and in these fits I leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine love darling. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous! Methought the billows spoke and pulled me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than ever plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddied. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions o'er. I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate, are great guilt, like poison given to a work a great time after. Now gins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that our ver suppler joints follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. If I have to austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a third of mine own life, for that to which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here afore heaven, I ratify this my rich gift. Oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her. For thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. Then, as my gift, and thine own acquisition, worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou, Thus break her virgin not before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy right be ministered. No sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow, but barren hate, sour eyed disdain and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so lowly that you shall hate it both. Therefore take heed. As Hyman's lamp shall light you. As I hope. 
for quiet days, fair issue, and long life. With such love as tis now the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion, our worser genius sh can shall never melt, mine honor into lust to, to take away the edge of that day's celebration. When I shall think or f when I shall think or fee the steeds are foundered, or night kept chained below. Barely spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What, Ariel, my industrious ser servant, Ariel? What would my potential master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows your last service did worthily perform. And I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble, o'er whom I give thee power. Here to this place, incite them to quick motion. For I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Aye, with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, and breathe twice, and cry, so, so, each one tripping on his toe will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master, no? Dearly, my delicate Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I conceive. If thou be true, do not give dalliance too much the rein. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire of the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night you'll vow. I warrant you, ma'am, the white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor, ardor of my liver. Well, now come, my Ariel. Bring a Corolla rather than want a spirit. Appear and pertly. No tongue, all eyes. Be silent. Ceres. Most bounteous lady, thy rich lease of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains where living, live nibbling sheep and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep, thy banks with pine and twilled brims, which spongy April at thy hest betrims, to make cold nymphs chaste crowns and thy broom groves, whose shadows the dismessed bachelors love being less lorned, thy pole-clipped vineyard and thy sea marge, sterile and rocky hard, where thou, thou thyself dost air the queen o'er the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass, grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport. Her peacocks fly amain, a portrait series her to entertain. Hail, many colored messenger, that ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffusest honey drops in refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres and my untrubbed down, rich scarf to my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grassed green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estates on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as dost thou know, do now attend the queen, since they did plot the means that dusky gifts my daughter got, her and her blind boy's scandaled company I have forsworn. Of her society be not afraid. I met her deity cutting the clouds towards Paphos and her son dove-drawn with her. Here they thought to have done some wanton charms upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bed right should be paid till Hymen's torch be lighted. But in vain, Mars' hot minion is returned again, her waspish head's son has broke his arrows, swears he will shoot no more, but play with sparrows and be a boy right out. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gate. How does my beauty sister? Go with me to bless this twain, that they may pr uh, um, prosperous be and honored in their issue. Honors, riches, marriage, blessing, long countenance and increasing. 
Joy, our really joys bestow upon you, Juno sings her blessings on you. Earths increase, boys in plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines of clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly burden bowing, spring come to you at the farthest, in the very end of harvest, scarcity and want shall shun you, Ceres' blessing so is on you. This is a most majestic vision, and harmoniously charming. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, which by mine art I have from their confines call to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare a wondered father and a w wise makes this place paradise. Sweet now, silence. Juno and Sarah whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush and be mute or else our spell is marred. You nymphs called naiads of the wandering brooks, with your sudded crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels and on this green land, answer your summons, Juno does command. Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate a contract of true love, but not too late. You sunburned sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday, you're right. Straw hats put on, and in these fresh nymphs encounter everyone in country footing. I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. Well done. Avoid. No more. This is, this is strange. Your mother's in some passion that works her strongly. Never till this day saw I her touched with anger so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air. Into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherits, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <sighs> Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My whole brain is troubled, but not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell and there repose. Eternal to our walk, still my beating mind. We wish you peace. Come with a thought. I thank thee. Ariel, come. Thy plots I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? We must prepare to meet with Caliban. A, my commander, when I presented Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, mum, they were red hot with drinking, so full of valour that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending toward their project. Then I beat my tabor, at which like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears that, calf-like, they, they my lowing followed through toothed briars, sharp furzes, pricking gorse and thorns, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them in the filthy mantled pool beyond your cell, there dancing up to the chins that the foul lake o stunk their feet. That was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery in my house. Go bring it hither, for still to catch these thieves. I go, I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost, and as with age his body uglier grows. So his mind cankers, 
I will plague them all, even to roaring. Come, hang them on this line. Pray, tread softly, that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We are now near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou wert but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly, all's hushed as midnight yet. Aye, but to lose our bottles in the pool? There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. Yet this is your harmless fairy monster. I will fetch off my bottle, though I be your ears from my labor. Prithee, prithee, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here, this is the mouth of the cell. No noise, and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own forever, and I, thy Caliban, for I thy foot licker. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano, oh, peer, oh, worthy Stefano. Look, what a wardrobe here is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool. It is but trash. <laughs> Monster, we know what belongs to frippery. Oh, King Stefano! Put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The drops he drowned this fool. <clears throat> what do you mean to dote thus on such luggage? Let alone and do the murder first. Okay. If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with, with pinches and make us strange stuff. Oh, be you quiet, monster. Mistress Line, is not this my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a bald jerkin. Oh, do, do, we steal by line and level and like your grace. I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for it. Which shall not be unrewarded while I am king of this country? Steel by line and level is an excellent pass of pate. There's another garment for it. Monster, come! Put some lime upon your fingers and away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time and all be turned to barnacles or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Oh, monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. And this. I and this. Hey, mountains, hey! Silver, there goes silver. Fury, fury, there, tyrant, there, hark, hark! <laughs> Go, change my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps, and more pinch-spotted make them that bird or cat of mountain. Hark, they roar! Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour lies at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air and freedom. For a little follow, and do me service. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? 
on the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you say our work should cease. I did say so when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, uh, mum, in the line of grove with which weather fends your cell. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them. Brimful of sorrow and dismay, but chiefly him that you termed, sir, mum, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears runs down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works him that if you now beheld him, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, mum, if I was human. And mine shall. As thou which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself one of their kind, but Relish all as sharply, passion as they be, kindlier move than thou art. Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason gainst my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go, release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, mum. You elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and you that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back. You demi-puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof of the you not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid weak masters though you be. I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azured vault set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Craves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped, let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for. I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. A solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains. Now useless board within thy skull, there stand, for you are spell stopped. Holy Gonzalo, honorable man, mine eyes insociable to the show of thine, O oh, fellowy drops. The charm dissolves space, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clear of reason. Oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver and a loyal sir to him thou followest. I will pay thy graces home, both in word and deed. Most cruelly did thou, our love, so use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a further in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood. You brother mine that entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature, whom with Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would have been killed your king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and their approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. Ariel, fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell. 
I will disgrace me and myself present as I was sometime Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Where the bee sucks, there suck I, in a cowslip's bell I'd lie. There I couch when owls do cry, on the bat's back I do fly. After summer merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. <sighs> it's my dainty Ariel, I shall miss thee, but yet thou shall have freedom. So. So, so, to the king's ship, invisible as thou art, there shall find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and the boatswain being awake, and force them to this place, and presently, I prithee. I drink the air before me, and return, or ere your pulse twice beat. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the rugged Duke of Milan. Prosper, for more assurance than a living prince does now speak to thee. I embrace thy body. And to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Where thou beest, she or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I do not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me, this must crave, and if this be at all, a, a most strange story. Thy duke do I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospera be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in her. No. For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest prosper, give us particulars of thy preservation. How? Thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrapped upon this shore, where I have lost how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son, Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience said it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought for help of whose soft grace for the like loss. I have her sovereign aid and rest myself content. You the like loss? As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you. For I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens. That they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish, myself were muddied in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason. 
And scarce think their eyes do offices of truth, their words are natural breath. But how so you have been jostled from your senses? Know for certain that I am Prospera, and that which was thrust forth of Milan, who most strangely upon the shore where you were wrecked was landed to be the Lord on it. No more yet of this, but it's a chronicle of day by day. Not a revelation, not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This cell is my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content you as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet Lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the Talk island... Me. If this island. prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder how many goodly creatures are there here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. It is new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that has severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renown but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life and second father. This lady makes him to me. I am hers, but oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I heavenly wept or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this cobbled drop a blessed crown, for it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become king of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy and set it down with gold on lasting pillars in one voyage. Did Clarabelle, her husband, find at Tunis? And Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospera, her dukedom, in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Yet so, amen. Oh, look, sir, sir, look, look, there is more of us. I prophesy, if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now, blasphemy, this swears grace or board, not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth, my land? What is the news? The best news is that we have found safely that we have safely found our king and company. The next, our ship, which but three glasses since we have gave our out split, uh, is tight and yare and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Mum, all the service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. These are not natural events. They strengthen from stranger to stranger Say, how came you hither? If I did think, sir, I were, I were well awake. 
I'd strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and yet how we know not, all clapped under hatches. Where, but even now, with strange and several noises of roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, were more diverse and more diversity of sounds, all horrible. We were awaked straightway at liberty, where we in all her trim freshly beheld our royal good and gallant ship, our master, capering to eye her on a tryst. So please you, uh, even in the dream, we were divided from them and wrought moping hither. Was it well done? Bravely, my diligence. Thou shalt be free. This is as strange a maze as e'er men trod. And there is this business more than nature. Was ever conduct of some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly, single I'll resolve you 